this video, we will go through how to create a dashboard view and have a brief understanding on what are the different options available in building this dashboard view. So before we begin, let's do a recap on what we have done in our previous videos. So in our previous videos, we have created individual visualizations in these individual worksheets over here. We can see these worksheets as different components for our dashboard. On this dashboard view, what we want to do is to put all the components together. So the easiest way to create a dashboard view is just to double click on whatever components that we want. Just double click them. And they will appear on our dashboard. It's quick and easy. We can rearrange the order by just dragging them across. We can also remove some of the legends or filters that we don't need. So these filters here might not make sense. So we may want to drag this across to place it over here. We can easily drag all this across. And there are also some quick way to fill up the space. So let's say for this table, we will want to fit our table to this box over here. So what we can do is to click on the object here, go to more options, and maybe we want to fit our width. So here we can keep the table to this top quadrant here and still able to scroll down the list. So over on the left here, we see that there is a size option. So the selection now is on a fixed size. And we have selected a pre-built size here, which is a generic desktop. So what happens is that this means that this dashboard here will be fixed based on this size. So for example, let's say if I decide to make this to full screen, you will see that this dashboard size remains the same. And then there is other options such as automatic. And we can see that this means that the dashboard will resize to fit any screen it is displayed on. So now let's try again. We'll do a full screen. You can see that the dashboard scales accordingly to the screen. So this size option actually really depends on your use cases. Uh, if we are working with a lot of floating objects, it will be better to work with a fixed size uh, and when working with automatic size it is better to keep the objects in tiles so over here when we double click by default we are on the tile option so what happens is that all these objects are already placed into tiles and all these tiles are container for example you can see that this is a horizontal container. So over here on the dashboard, you'll see that there are a lot of different objects option. So these are containers. We have the horizontal container. We have the vertical containers. So what this does is basically the containers will wrap the objects inside this container. And it is very useful when we want the size of the objects to scale together. So let's take an example of what a floating object might look like. So let's say for example, um, for this legend, I don't want it to be taught here. I might want to place it, let's say like over here, but I can't do it. I can only drag and drop to a specific box. Okay, let's undo this. So how we can do this is turn this into a floating object. So what we can do is select this object here, go to more options, and we change the floating. 
Now this is floating. We can drag it get over here and it can be overlay onto another object. Okay, so now let's look at some of the other options that we have also. So in this object, we know that we can go to the layout here and we can add some borders. We can also change the background color uh, and you will see that only this changes. Why? Because this worksheet itself, we might want to change it to none. There. And you'll see that after we change this, there's this white line here, which is not ideal. Um, so what we can do is... I think there should be something with this row divider. Let's remove all these dividers. Okay, great. So now this looks better. Okay. We might want to change our font colors as well. So we can edit the title. We can change this to white. So these are some of the options that we can play around with. Um, let's revert them all back. This is to just show an example of what we can do. Alright. Let's also see some ways on how we can add interactions on this um, dashboard view. So we may want to use this as a filter. So what we can do is select on this object and click on the icon over here. This would mean that we will use this as a filter for the rest of the worksheets over here. So for example, we can select on the state and you will filter all the relevant details based on the state filter. So to see what's happening, we can actually go to dashboard here and we go to action. So here we can see that this filter action has been generated. So when we click on edit, we can see that this map worksheet affects this other or this other worksheet. We can select the worksheets that we want these filters to affect. So let's say maybe I want it to affect this product worksheet, which is this one, and also this worksheet here. Okay, I'll leave this alone. So I'll click on OK. And now what happens is that when we filter on this, you see that this ch charts over here remains unchanged and it only affects these two charts over here. So there are also other options here available. So there's other actions here that is available to add interactions on the dashboard. Um, let's briefly go through one other action, which is the highlight option. So we can do this and let's say we want to use this table to highlight whatever pro product that we have selected on this chart over here. So we want the product sheet to affect the sales versus profit worksheet. Okay. And we can hit on OK. So now what happens is when I select this particular product, it will get highlighted on this chart over here. So if we go back to these actions over here, we can see that there is also option to run the action on a few conditions. So select is what we have done where we have clicked the table and this, will, this action will be triggered accordingly. We can also run the action on hover. So let's take a look at how it looks like. So when we hover over it, it will highlight accordingly. And there is also the option of menu. So what it does is that you have to click on the table and then you click on the action to apply, which is this. And then it will highlight accordingly. 
So that is the menu action. So here we have created our dashboard where we can interact with. So we have things like the sales by the month, where we can look at the distribution by changing this accordingly by category or by region. And then we can select the top amount of products to look at. We can see how the profit varies across the different states. We can use this as a filter to analyze the products in this specific region. And we can then also use this table to further understand the relationship of the sales against the profit. We can also use these parameters to visualize on the chart the products that fits our criteria. So we have come to the end of the Tableau Basics series. So follow this channel to learn about more tips and solutions for different use cases on Tableau.